Um, because the first one I made, I kept having to um, answer the same objection over and over again. Now I'm basing everything that I'm saying on evidence. I've um, said that we've seen these animals like the frill shark and the ocean nautilus and I know there's at least um, one other example but I forget that they that, that living for millions of years without changing and um, that's evidence that I'm suggesting um, shows us that change over time doesn't happen I mean that's just how I'm interpreting that evidence now I have some more evidence that suggests that changes are not taking place and by the way I'm, I'm open to the idea that you know there could be evolution but it has to be um, proven and I'm using looking at ev evidence and I'm saying well this evidence is contradicting the predictions of the theory um, the evolutionists have been arguing against my first video saying that well they agree that those animals wouldn't change they don't need to change because there's not environmental pressure on them to do so so I said well let's look at animals that have experienced evolutionary pressure that um, I would think that if the predictions are correct would have resulted in change and I'm selecting the approximately 120 flightless birds that have gone extinct um, you would think that the environmental catalyst would at least allow one of those birds to develop flight I mean w and, and we could probably see a record of that we would have say the flighted um, dodos and the and the flightless dodos or it would be the other other way around we'd have a flightless bird and then we would find evidence that it had um, gotten the ability to fly okay we we didn't see this happening um, 100 at least 120 uh, bird types that um, <coughs> were gone extinct because um, they weren't able to um, live up to that evolutionary prediction that they would um, develop a mechanism for their survival so I'm just using evidence and weighing it against the prediction and saying I'm not convinced I don't I think that I'm being a good scientist about this I know of a study that um, says that um, they've exposed bacteria to uh, different environments as catalysts for change and um, the bacteria were able to uh, mutate uh, up to six times and they ran out of steam after six times and so I'm saying uh, I would interpret that as a limitation to the adaptability and by the way none of the bacteria turned into anything else they in fact every time uh, a change was provoked uh, they um, lost some robustness up in and and up until six times where they they simply ran out of steam so I'm using those pieces of evidence and I'm saying these predictions and there's nothing wrong with me um, drawing that conclusion I think it's a reasonable and logical thing to do um, now I want to also as um, I'm posting this a video um, address abiogenesis and the problems there and we can um, do the same thing we can take the prediction and the prediction is that the elements contain whatever is necessary um, to um, provide for the emergence of life from an organic uh, elements and so we could take the list of elements that are in the uh, human body and um, oxygen nitrogen and so forth 
take them in the correct proportions mix them up. In fact, this would be a good experiment to do in your chemistry class. Um, if you're a chemistry teacher, you could do this with your students. Of uh, The ingredients are very easy to obtain, um, the list of ingredients in the human body, um, oxygen and nitrogen and so forth. And you put them in the right proportions, uh, mix them up in your tub, um, and um, we should see the emergence of a human body. Now, if that doesn't happen, then I think we could say, well, here's evidence that um, the uh, per potential uh, for these elements to spontaneously um, arrange in such a way that um, a human body is formed uh, either it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. If it doesn't happen, then I feel that I'd be justified in saying, well, the, apparently the potential for these elements to cause the emergence of uh, a human body um, is not there. There has to be some something else. It would be you could consider those elements a hardware and there has to be a software uh, application applied uh, to get them to uh, to make sense um, I've seen videos that try to say that there can be um, abiogenesis well here's a perfect way to to um, test it just get those elements that are in the human body and mix them in the correct proportion and there you go. If it doesn't happen then uh, you, right now your abiogenesis is very speculative. At any rate, um, I'm open to the possibility that um, these properties um, can be emergent if it, you know, if that is in fact the case. Um, I've made a video called Primordial Soup in the Bible, which the Bible discuss, dis, describes God making a um, human body out of, uh, out of the soil. So I'd imagine it could be possible, but you don't need any length of time to do it. It should have to take process about 20 minutes. So, so much for this now. I look forward to your, uh, your further argumentation on, on this presentation. Um, and uh, I'm enjoying the conversation. I'm enjoying the discussion. This is not meant to be um, picking a fight. I'm just saying this is the evidence. This is how it contradicts the theory. And I shouldn't be uh, condemned for um, not um, accepting evolution uh, when it contradicts its predictions, when the evidence contradicts its predictions. I don't see why that's condemnable. So there you have it.